Hey everybody, welcome to a very special video, one that's different to the usual schedule given uh, we are at the halfway point of the 2021 season. So what I thought I'd do today is, uh, you know, start a conversation about our mid-season review. And uh, given we've got a pretty solid sample size now of what's happened this season, uh, I thought it was the perfect time to, you know, split the season in half, have a look, reflect, and then look forward at what um, may happen and what we hope will happen uh, in the second half of the season. And I'm basically going to start the conversation. There's going to be a lot of things that I speak about, but ultimately there's only going to be a certain amount of things that I can speak about. So I want you to add things that I'm not talking about in the comments below. I'm doing that on purpose because I want this to be a very well-rounded discussion. And um, I guess we'll start with you know the win-loss record. It's, it's four and seven. Um, we'll talk about that and what it means in a minute. But I, I want to get to get up a few... Uh, graphics here, right here, um, and talk a little bit about what they mean. And um, this is a brand new Twitter account, um, Carlton News Info, who I don't know who owns it. They're, they are remaining uh, anonymous and that's fine, but I thought it was a good snapshot of what's happened and I tend to agree with everything here and obviously want to get your input and see what you think about this. Um, let's go game by game. So um, round one, up and about, Richmond at the MCG, the return of footy, very happy, very grateful. And that's a theme that's probably paramount throughout the entire year. But um, we really did take it to Richmond. I thought it was a, a sign of growth. I really did. I know it's one game, but I thought, wow, we're really pushing Richmond. But ultimately, we fall by 25 points. Round two, Collingwood, we all know what that was. That was, that was very, very disappointing. We didn't show up. We didn't come with the right attitude to play against Collingwood and what it meant to play against Collingwood. We lose by 21 points. We'll go through it a little bit more. Um, so 0-2, we're thinking, oh God, it's happened again. 0-2. But round three and four were, were positive. In you know, Frio, a game who we can look back on now and say, you know, people talk about, oh yeah, but Fife was out. Well, Fife doesn't really dominate for Frio like he used to. They were a well-coached team. They were away. We did the job. 45-point win. We probably could have even won that game by a bit more. Gold Coast, a gritty win um, had to be done. They tackled us and they came with the absolute intent required to play this game and got the job done there. And then we were, you know, on level pegging. We could breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Not that we had done anything. We had probably just done the job and we were still really hurting from the Collingwood loss. Uh, we probably thought, or I probably thought, should have been three and one, but it was what it was. Um, then we came up against two teams who, you know, were in the top four last year and are looking like they're definitely going to play in, in the top six or going to play in the finals for sure this year in, in Port Adelaide and Brisbane. Now, Port, that was a bitterly disappointing game. We didn't really fire a shot, just weren't up to it, um, whatever. Brisbane, that one really, really bugged me. That, uh, that patch where we gave up... <sighs> The, the run of play to Brisbane just just really became a theme for the rest of this first half of the season. Um, so we've lost two in a row. And now we're questioning again, oh gosh, where are we at? What's going on? The Essendon game was a non-negotiable. It was a non-negotiable. And for me, it was one of my favorite moments of this season so far. And when I say moment, I probably mean day, you know, most enjoyable day. I, I still look back on that. Just the weather was perfect. My seat was perfect. There yeah, with my brother, my housemate, the vibe, the, the energy and all of that. But good day. Got the job done. You know, it was a win that had to be had. Um, then we came up against Melbourne and that we, we, we just didn't fire a shot there as well. Lost by 26. Hawthorne was another one very similar to Essendon in the sense of had to win, non-negotiable. Got the job done by four goals. Probably should have been a bit more. Didn't take our opportunities, etc. Um... And then we have just come up against Sydney and we've lost that by 22 points um, after three really good quarters and one poor, abhorrent fourth quarter. So we sit here 0-5 against what we call the top eight sides. Um, I, I, I think we'll call them a top eight side. We're four and two against the bottom eight and four and seven overall. So thank you very much to this um, Twitter account for this summary. I like it a lot. Um, he also put in, he or she put in here, we were never in it against Port or Melbourne, didn't take our chances against Richmond, Sydney, um, or Brisbane, um, and the unacceptable losses with Collingwood and the Doggies. I did, did miss the Doggies, but the Doggies was another very disappointing one. It was up by 28 and, and, and shat the bed. Now, what are my overall feelings of what's going on? So, um, definitely disappointing, um, Definitely below the expectations of what I thought, where I thought we were. Coming into this season, um, we didn't finish strongly in 2020. 
And then we sort of allowed the whole COVID thing to become a reason why and there were reasons for and you know the hubs away from families etc etc even though there are 17 other clubs that had the same similar situations happen to them so i thought okay yes we finished strongly in 2019 we didn't carry it through to 2020 but end of 2020 left a sour taste in my mouth i thought all right fresh start we get the two recruits who are going to just be the you know, the icing on the cake for us to now absolutely make our charge into finals now i'm not saying we can't make finals um and we'll do this review again at the end of the season. But as it stands right now, we are we are very much behind where we, we should be. And the reason why I say should is because I have an expectation on this team to be pushing for finals, making finals, if not pushing for finals. What I see right now is not even a team that's pushing for finals. Um, the mental application, I think, is not there or not where it needs to be. I don't think we give... I don't think we play like our, like our lives are on the line, if that makes sense. We don't play with a collective mentality of this win is so important to me. It's more important to anything in this moment. It's almost like the players are not present in the moment. I'm seeing a lot of that. Um, I'm not going to go into whose fault is it, board administration, coaches, assistants, because that conversation will definitely come up in the comments, and I invite you to do that there. I'm trying to look for things that, and think about things that, that haven't really been spoken about. The, the, the mentality of this group has not evolved yet. There is still time. But right now, I haven't seen an evolution in the mentality of this group. I haven't seen an evolution in the group's ability to play as a unit. Um, and that could be for a range of, of reasons. Uh, you know, we have some key players missing. I still think the core of our best players have played for the majority of the year. You've got Walsh, Weedering, Mackay, Cripps, and Doherty, Saad, and Williams. They're, they have played for the majority of this year. I know Saad missed early in the year and had the suspension, and then he was a little sore. Um, but they, they have played for the majority of the year. Do they need some time? to gel together? Are we evolving away from the Patrick Cripps show into the Cripps, Walsh, Weedering, Mackay, Saad, Williams show? That could be something in there where I can take some solace and some hope in that, okay, maybe we've needed to take a little bit of a step back in order to go forward. Um, but that that theory for me gets squashed when I when I see the mental application because I'm, I'm happy to cop the fact that we could take a step back to go forward if I see the mental application applied, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a little bit of entitlement. Uh, I'm just I'm just seeing a group that just hasn't, obviously hasn't clicked, um, but together they haven't gelled. And I worry about the standards that are being set. And I worry about what who's being held accountable and who's driving the standards. And I hear about it's the players. Well, if it's the players and if it's the senior senior players and leadership group, there have been many instances this season where these leaders or these senior guys have failed to execute the ba the basic principles in the moment. You know, we just recently on the weekend, Doherty refused to, to go in hard and pick up that ball, kicked it off the ground. There's a few more. Cripps missing wide open shots. Cripps holding the ball for too long. Not 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 doing the team thing. Um, Williams not running hard enough. Sard's defensive um, running or lack thereof. Um, many times where, you know, Jones is caught out, not near his man. Um, Weedering's done it as well. There, there are just instances where it hasn't happened. And, and that's when the conversation for me then goes to, all right, well, is it the instruction that they're given? Are the coaches giving them an instruction that maybe either isn't clear enough or is it clear enough and you know internally or subconsciously they're not believing in it? Have they embraced the game plan? I don't know. Let's have a look at some more statistics, right? Right here. Carlton News Info on Twitter. These are some season ranks for where we are at the moment. And we showed this, um, we showed this a few, um, uh, about a week ago. 18th for kicking efficiency. This is a team that is coached, as, as, as Pommy has identified, this is a team that is coached by a man whose ethos is to be a kicking side. David T coaches kicking teams. We are 18th in the league, last for kicking efficiency. We're 14th for points against. We're 10th for disposal efficiency. We're 11th for inside 50 differential. 18th for clearance differential. 18th for tackle differential. 18th for tackle differential and 18th for clanger differential. There's a few more. We are sixth in the league for contested possessions, which people love talking about. And we're 17th for effective disposals. And 
it's these are alarming <laughs> these are alarming can they be fixed i think they can i've seen david king with the commentary about the the moments where it's just a lack of focus um i generally think that's what it is as well it's a lack of focus or lack of an ability to focus for long enough um i think we are a hard team i don't think we are a hard enough team you know we want to crack in and we want to compete but we are not going in there with the mentality to destroy and a mentality to dominate um, I don't want to compete. I want to dominate, right? That That's the mentality. Because if you don't dominate, you can fall backward. You can fall back on, you know, really competing hard. But if your goal is just to compete, you fall back and it, you've got to sort of reach for the stars, you know, and, and fall for the moon, if that makes sense. So um, I'm seeing that. Now, Mars on the jumper punch, uh, he identified the red time goals. We average six goals in red time. So that's where the conversation comes out about it's either fitness or it's just mental toughness to hang in there for long enough and focus for long enough. And who's responsible for, for that? Well, ultimately, it's the players on game day and their pride for the jumper, right? But they are obviously dictated to and um, abide by instructions given to them from the football club, from the coaching staff, from the high performance um, department. So there's questions. There's questions all over. I've seen the fans move from um, really divided into don't question high performance, stop questioning coaches, got a back in Teague. And I've seen the conversation really generally move. I, I take note of a lot. Obviously, I watch a lot. I consume a lot. Um, with the channel, there's just a lot of information that comes through to me. And I'm just giving sort of my observations of what's going on here. And I think I, I just see a, a, a more of a, a movement towards a bit more of a unity with the distaste in the club. I, I really do. And, and, and that can be alarming, but it can be fixed. Now, I've gone through the rest of the season and we've got 11 more games. I've gone through and I've, you know, I'm pissed off. So I'm doing it with a real pissed off mentality. I'm not doing it with rose colored glasses, but I'm holding my expectations of what this I have for this group. And these are the these are the games that, that are, we're going to play, and these are what I think will happen. So we've got the Eagles this week at the SCG. I've put that as a win. I expect us to win that game. The Giants away, we play them twice. I split them. So I think we, you know, obviously I go into every game thinking we can win, but I split, the, I split them. So the one against the Giants away, I've put that as a loss, but the one afterwards I put as a win. So win against the Eagles, loss against the Giants. We play Adelaide at home. I've got that as a win. We play Frio away. Now, I put it as a win, but that's a that's a big game. That is a tough game. Frio are a different beast away, and we know that. But I still think we're good enough, and we should be beating them there. And that it, Because we need to win games that we think are going to be really hard and, and whatnot. There has to be like an existential reach for something greater than what we are. And I think that's one of them, and the other, there's a few others that are coming. Geelong at home, I put it as a loss. I don't think we deserve to be saying we can beat them, but I know we can, but I put it as a loss. Collingwood away... Don't you fucking even dare. Don't they they wouldn't they wouldn't have the balls to lose that game against Collingwood. I don't think they've got the mental toughness to lose to Collingwood again this year. I don't think they can do that. So that's a win. North at home, that's a win for me. This is the other one. St. Kilda, it'll be I'm thinking it'll be at Marvel. That is a big one because they play very well at Marvel, but they haven't been very good this year. And, and it's been shown. So I've put that as a win. We have to beat them. The Suns at home, we have to beat them. Port Adelaide away, that's a very, very tough game. I've put it as a loss, but again, you know the mentality. And then the Giants at home is a win. So we'll lose to them the first time we play them and we'll beat them the second time. That's eight wins. I'm not even being... I really don't think I'm being one-eyed in that. That's my expectation for the second half of the year. Those are the eight games I think we can win. Um, obviously, just because I expect it doesn't mean that'll happen, but I'm just giving you a bit of a rundown. So it, it's possible. That that would that would take us to 12 wins. That's finals. That's finals. 11 wins, you're asking for trouble. You're probably finishing in that 9th to 10th bracket. But 12 wins, I'm pretty sure that locks you in, I, I think. Um, if we win 12 games and don't make finals, I think I'll be very disappointed. But at the same time, 12 wins is a, is a, is a, is a tick and a step forward from last year. So... It's not completely doom and gloom. Um, we need to tighten up our focus for longer and, and and buy in. I think there needs to be... Oh, I wish I was on the inside to just observe. I don't even want to talk to them. I just want to stand there and watch and, and correspond what I'm seeing. That's really all I want. But I, for my observations, outside looking in, um, there just needs to be an evolution, you know? 
this four and seven record, what we've seen so far, I genuinely do not believe this is a reflection of what this group is capable of and, and who they are. And I, I want them to understand that. And I want them to have a meeting of the minds and have like an intervention, but a serious one, like the cuddling and the niceties, they've got to stop. The messaging from the club about patting on the it's got to stop. We want, I, I would like to see us be a little bit more, not vindictive, not, you know, bad, but I want us to have a ruthless edge to our standards. That's what I want to see. That's from club level. I want to see an improvement in that. Um, I'm tired of being the nice club. I'm tired of it. I don't, I, let's be the nice club, but let's win first, then be nice. Because this is a really important period for this football club, this second half of this season. It's really, really important. If we go four and seven again in this second half of the year, and we dish up what we've dished up in this first half, it's just, I really worry about what it'll, it'll do to, you know, um, people that work at the club fan base because you know, we've been sold a dream and we've all bought into the dream. Well, the fans have bought into the dream, but I don't think the players have bought into the dream yet. Now, it can be done. I'm not giving up hope on the year. Um, you know, there are a few things that just can't continue to go as bad as what they have. Some of the players who have yet to stamp their authority on their careers and, and this season is a little bit alarming to me, but again, there's time. Sam Petrovsky seaton is one of them. I refuse to believe that this is this is it. I think this is a little bit of a hard patch for him and such is life. Life's tough. You go through it. I want to see him evolve through it. I want to see him get stronger for it. And I want to see him back in the side and impacting games the way we know he can in the second half of the year. Will Setterfield is another one. He has had a good two weeks at the time of making this video, but second half of the year, it's got to be back to what we saw in 2020 and then some. It's got to be 20 to 22 touches a game and improvement and looking forward to peaking in his career. Um, Cripper's on the way back. Doherty's on the way back. Sardin Williams, I need more from them. These are guys that have to be better than what they have. They've had you know half a season now to gel with their teammates. They're, they're smart footballers. They're experienced footballers. And they're good enough to be better than what they are. And I expect more from them. But let's go back down to the people that are developing. Paddy Dow, okay, few injuries and whatnot, but when he was healthy, the mentality wasn't there. I want more from Paddy. Lockie O'Brien, it's time to get back into this side and impact. And that's on Lockie O'Brien. It's time. These are guys that we've heavily invested in, um, you know, over the course of, you know, two years or two to three years, and we haven't seen it yet. Now, of you know, th those are the guys I'm looking at in the second half of the year to, to, to get in. Now, um, what I have been really impressed with uh, individuals, which I wish I didn't have to say that, but I have. I think Matt Owies has been a really big revelation for us, a really positive light for us because we now have some positivity moving forward that we've got one there that applies himself and, he, and he's put himself in a position where he can't be dropped. Liam Stocker, I'm really impressed with how he's coming along. Um, I'd like to see him have a few more midfield minutes in the second half of the year and develop that part of his game. Um, you know, Walsh, Weedering, Mackay, you know, well, Weedering and let's say Weedering and Mackay, the 2015 draft, they're, you know, they're coming in. Uh, they're coming into their own. Weedering, obviously, last year. Mackay's really come on this year. Walsh continues on. Um, the addition of Charlie. It's going to happen. It's it's actually really exciting. It's going to happen this year. We're going to see him play. And as I say that, like, it's just uh, the heart beats a little bit more and, and, and he's going to bring an energy and a spark into this group. I'm not saying he's going to kick... 25 goals in the second half of the year. But what I'm saying is I think there's just going to be a real love and feel good factor and it's going to, you know, galvanize the group to have his energy back into the fold. And I think it'll spark something. Zach Fish is another one who's very important. Um, I want to see him in the team. I want to see him playing on a wing for some minutes. I don't think Cottrell's the move right now. Um, I know Fisher is crafty as a forward, but I think we can position him in the wing. So I'm going to leave it there. Those are my observations of what's going on at the moment halfway through. Um, I have purposely left out certain bits of information that I want you guys to um, to put in the comments below. I love the detail that some of you go through. It's, it's fascinating. It, it teaches me a lot. And then we'll be able to look back on these videos. I always think, you know, long-term, like in a decade from now or in two, three, four decades from now, when someone wants to put together like a documentary of of how the fans were feeling, you know, our comments below here in these videos are going to be used for that documentary of when we get there. And um, I'm really excited by that. But yeah, share with me how you're feeling halfway through the year. 
um, maybe we can split it up. You know, best best performance, worst performance, um, what you expect for the second half of the season, and sort of maybe start from there, and then add whatever else you think is relevant, and 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 we'll chat about it a little bit more. But um, I think no one's under any illusions that we need to be better than what we have in the first half. We are the Carlton Football Club, and that stands for more than just you know more than just a sporting team. It, it's a way of life. It's it's a it's a set of principles and it's a way of being, you know, and uh, that's what I'll leave it on there. So chat to you then. Have a great one. Let's have a good second half of the year and go the Mighty Blues.